I never knew a place like this existed on Earth. Look yeah. at that deep blue hole there. I wonder what's inside. I'm excited to see the flamingos. Here there was stuff walking around our tent at night. Yeah, we out here. We're deep. We are. We're deep in the desert. Yes. still drives for now after picking up the rental car we went to the supermarket to get enough food and water to last us for a week we left Santiago and drove north up to the coast towards the Atacama Desert the coast was rocky and rough and we saw hardly any vegetation our plan was to spend seven days driving 2,700 miles around the Atacama Desert, sleeping in a tent and preparing most of our own food. We couldn't find a good, safe place to set up our tent, so we slept in the car for the night. Mm. <laughs> After making breakfast, we continued our way north. Oh, it just ends. Along the way, we passed several huge mining operations. They looked like something out of a dystopian movie. Complex machinery spilling smoke into the air, trains and 18-wheelers fueling, hauling, and transporting, and a spider web of metal and wire sprawling out over the dry, flat land. <laughs> What's for lunch? <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! I'm here. It's important as a co-pilot to be the hands of your driver. <laughs> <laughs> The Mano del Desierto, or the Hand of the Desert, is an art installation by Mario Irarazabel 
who built the structure in 1992. It stands 36 feet tall and represents a symbol of human suffering, helplessness, and vulnerability in the face of adversity and injustice across the world. What is this? Should we get up close and fall in a fucking well in the middle of the desert? Aside from the occasional mines and volcanoes, the desert landscape looked endless in all directions, the road going on forever. With the closest mining towns often hundreds of miles away and no cell phone service, we got a sense of just how vast and expansive the desert is. Wanting to drive at night for safety, we found a good camping spot out of view of the road and watched the sunset before stargazing. Because there is no light pollution and rarely any clouds, the Atacama is one of the best places on earth to stargaze. In the morning, we packed up camp and made our way through the desert to a place that looks like the moon. The Atacama Desert is the driest place on Earth receiving no more than one millimeter of rain per year, which only occurred during three of the last 15 years. The landscape formed more than 200 million years ago as a result of oceanic continental plate interactions, which produced deformations in the land and then was sculpted by water and wind erosion. During the Triassic period, this area was a lush tropical basin with rivers and large amounts of seasonal rainfall, and is where the earliest known well-preserved dinosaurs are found. Geologists have determined that some areas of this desert haven't received rainfall for over 23 million years. For scale, Humans have been on Earth for only 6 million years, and Homo sapiens have been here for only the last 300,000 years. Over an hour away from the nearest town and seemingly in the middle of the desert, 
we stopped to check out a little town called San Pedro de Atacama. Oh, I thought that was a real person. <laughs> <laughs> After walking around the dirt streets and filling up on fuel, we stop by these salt pools on our way out of town. Sometimes it felt like I was looking over the edge of the earth into space, and sometimes like I was peering into the depths of the open ocean. This is so cool. Back in the car and on the search for a green oasis in the middle of the desert, we sang a lot of power ballads. But because of copyright laws, I had to overlay other music on top, so unfortunately you can't hear us belting out the notes as if we're singing to 20,000 plus, but hopefully you can see our dedication to our screaming fans. Like you. It's just a little hole. Just a little hole. What about this one? Just, just a little hole. Back on the road, we were looking for salt pools that you can swim in, but instead we found ourselves in the middle of a vast, endless expanse of jagged salt rocks with an entire range of volcanoes in the background. This is kind of scary. Yeah, we out here, we're deep. We are. We're deep in the desert. Yes. We are very it's, fucked, if anything. It is so inhospitable out here. Yeah. The car would get stuck. Yeah. We can't walk. Like, look at it. It was just yeah. too spiky. The only, like, the only place saltier on Earth, Brooks Heart. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, dude. Like, fuck. Wow. Okay. Well, that sucks. We can't go. I never knew a place like this existed on Earth. There is so much salt everywhere as far as you can see. And then there's the Andes and 
the background with the volcanoes. It's a pretty crazy place. After driving several hours back in the direction we came, we pulled off the road and set up camp. <laughs> we camped in the same spot again. It was a good spot. Though I'm pretty sure there was stuff walking around our tent at night. Probably a llama, but still scary. Taking a different road than yesterday, we eventually found the salt pools in the middle of the same inhospitable landscape. Millions of years ago, this whole area, as far as the eye can see, was an ocean. Millions of years ago, it evaporated, leaving behind all the salt, forming these super salty pools, which makes it really easy to float. It's a, it's a little bit cold, actually. <laughs> It's it's pretty chilly. Why? Mm. Oh weird. Oh <laughs> <How> weird. <laughs> oh this is weird. <laughs> oh it's so fucking cold. So I'm essentially walking on and looking out at the bottom of the ocean, which is crazy to think about. Look at that deep blue hole there. I wonder what's inside.
excited to see the flamingos. These salt lagoons are in a basin, the lowest part of the region, which used to be a lake and also evaporated millions of years ago. The flamingos are using their feet to stir up the sediment, which enables them to find and eat brine shrimp, their main source of food and the reason their feathers are tinged pink. I am amazed at how varied the landscapes are, with salt flats turning into ground fertile enough to sustain vegetation, which then in turn can feed herds of guanaco and other wildlife. The contrast of the yellow grasses and shrubs with the snow-capped volcanoes is just stunning. It's also a good reminder of just how far out we are and how huge and vast this landscape is. Driving way up into the highlands, we came to a place located at over 12,000 feet, known for its red rocks, colored by the oxidation of iron. The incredible colors of the mountains, rocks, and water makes this place seem magical and otherworldly, blown away by the astonishing beauty and frigid wind. It's lunchtime! I learned about this from the Chileno cowboy who gave us a ride hitchhiking and let us stay at his house. Merkin, it's really good. He's like hot dogs. <laughs> The Merkin does not taste like hot dogs. No, just really mix it with hot dogs. <laughs> I gotta step outside to eat this. It's really juicy. Don't want to get it in the car. Making our way back towards the main road, we found our last camping spot before heading back towards Santiago in the morning. To the best 
best desert camping spot yet. Cheers. Cheers. Wanting to take a different route on our way back than we took in the beginning, we set off across more endless desert, hoping this wasn't a terrible idea. Several hours into the drive and seeing no signs of life anywhere, the road unexpectedly took a turn for the worse. The road dissolved into terrifying sand pits. Thinking the worst thing to happen would be to get the car stuck in the sand and then being forced to survive out here until someone randomly drove by and rescued us, I decided to hit the sand pits with speed to try to make it through. This drove one of the best roads of our life. representation of how it went. <laughs> but we survived and miraculously the car still drives. For now. Operative word. <laughs> For now. <laughs> After about eight sand pits and a few tears, we came to a large mine. We stopped at a gas station where we assessed the damage to the rental car. The metal bracket holding up the radiator had broken, causing it to hang down on one side. These miners saw we needed help and managed to tie the radiator up so we could limp our way out of the desert and drive the 1,200 miles back to Santiago. Another day in paradise. We drove cautiously for several hours before stopping in the same place as the first night to sleep in the car once more. Okay, it's our last day driving to Santiago. We have 550 miles. Hopefully the car works. It's kind of a long drive for a broken car, but adventure. It's the travel baby. I decided to wash the car before returning it, hoping the radiator wouldn't look as bad if it was clean. just filled up in La Serena. We are a little bit less than halfway to Santiago. The car is doing great. No problems. Uh, really happy about that. Surprisingly, there were a lot of toll roads, and we ended up paying over $60 in tolls during the trip. However, the tolls meant we were on a paved road near a city, which meant that if anything happened with the car, we would be able to get help.
Chicago, which is fantastic because the car held up wonderfully the whole way. Bad news is we're sitting in traffic, but I will take traffic over getting stranded in the desert. So, yay.